pretty happy with this fire here that we got going. Got my Reed's ginger brew ready to go. Hey everybody, welcome back. Part two here of our human vending machines special social signals, practically social episode 15. Coming to you fireside tonight because I thought I'd share that with you since in my last video I talked about cave dwellers and I think it's really relaxing to be able to sit here and just enjoy this fire. I'm very grateful to one of my lawn mowing customers for allowing me to do this um, burn some wood in her backyard so was looking forward to it had to kind of wait uh, a little bit later the neighbor opened their pool today so they had a lot of loud music going there so you won't see me on this one but you will hear me and uh, I hope you enjoy the fire and the content here we've got for you all right, so last video I set out some things to think about. I talked about dating apps as human vending machines, though I didn't really go into detail. Remember, calling dating apps human vending machines is a bit extreme, isn't it? Shock value. In this video, I promise I'll explain. We'll also wrap around and talk about the other pieces, such as what people using dating apps might encounter and some considerations for using the apps themselves. All set? Got the analogy because I had experiences that led me there and I was sure others had too. One of my clients and I were in a session and we talked about this. She talked a lot about not finding what she wanted. There were plenty of men available to her, they just didn't have all the ingredients. They were more like snacks. Short on nutrients, unlike the fulfilling meals that she was looking for. Vending machines are known for snacks, primarily. When was the last time you got dinner from a vending machine? This snack metaphor helped me develop the human vending machine analogy. We approach the machine hungry. We see someone that looks good on paper and we press a button. Dopamine hits and the process of feeding ourselves with something that might not be so nutritious can easily become a habit for many app and site users. It's become routine and simple just not very natural. Remember the survival simplicity cave person example? Yes, we're still operating from our habits. Keep in mind that McLean's theory has been, quote, dismissed as evolutionarily incorrect and of no heuristic value by those in comparative evolutionary neurobiology. I'd like to consider that too. Besides that, now everything's become convenient and disposable. If the machine vends you something you don't like, you can always dump it. Maybe there's something better in there and you still have change in your pocket. That shiny thing looks good. Move on to our, moving on to our next discussion points, I mentioned addiction earlier too. Let's incorporate that. I always find addiction a fascinating element to consider when we're talking biology and neuroscience. What's the first thing we got addicted to? Maybe warmth. To the first question I had, how do dating apps commodify us as humans? Clearly, dating apps are a big money maker. They are value loaded, not necessarily value driven or valuable. Whether you subscribe or casually browse until you're running out of prospects and you think that subscribing might up the numbers and chances of success, beware. Subscribing to a, subscribing to a service shows that you have an investment you're likely more serious about finding something other than just a one-night stand. However, lots of publications will tell you it won't increase your chances. That said, there's money that you've paid. One way of looking at this might be that as you move through the process, you determine whether or not it's worth the money. You could give a dollar value or a price per unit number, equally distributed among everyone you're interested in talking to. This is similar to looking at those tags at the grocery store that list unit price. Let's say you get a dozen people for your $35 that month. That's almost $3 per person. You chat away and if you're lucky, they chat back. It's sort of like buying a drink at a coffee house or a bar and you get to say, 
how you do it. On the flip side, for each person that electronically shuns you, the monetary value transfers to someone who does chat you up. So we increase their value. The value just gets shifted, not wasted. Let's say you connect and have a real conversation with five people, and now you've paid $7 per person. Fancy drink you got there, and you didn't even have to leave your pajamas. Let's look at a different piece of this pie. The dating process is loaded with other values. The value the site owners and partners get from learning all about you, the value of the limits of the site, and the value of sheer volume of eligible partners. What value do we get? Market-wise, we've all been assigned a monetary value in this process. As such, we've been commodified. Keep in mind that your self-value and your finances are important. So is your privacy. That is all to say that we still haven't gotten to important values, our personal values. This is just the surface. Phew! The next stop here on the Dating Site Express is to talk a bit about more human psychology and behavior. Oh no! Not more of that! Dating site developers and administrators have heavily researched our psychology and behavior. They even try to anticipate it. These are used to both create content and profit, as well as to monitor and research the habits of ongoing participants. Keep in mind that the dating site can research all aspects of your behavior, with the terms of agreement you swipe yes to. Researchers in the field of psychology, social workers, doctors and lawyers all pour over this stuff before it gets to our hot little hands. What else? Depending on which site you're on, you may see the great and powerful odds behind the curtain. Sites may explicitly tell you what their philosophy on human psychology and behavior is, and how they supposedly set their site or app up to get you connected. The rest is trade secret and uses machines to do the work. Their set of beliefs and practices drive the way they present the site and the way it works. Will this site work for you? Do you share the same views of human psychology and behavior as them? Let's go Blade Runner for a second. Our human behavior is being data mined on these sites, utilized and capitalized on. Machines are learning who we are and approximate what they think we want. Human behavior is complicated. Or is it? Okay, hang in there. Earlier I talked about dopamine and pleasure-seeking as processes that developed with more advanced parts of the brain. These also motivate us in different ways. Fun, passion, lust, risk. In pharmacokinetics, they say that psychoactive drugs, whether nicotine, caffeine, alcohol, or other pleasure-making drugs, all follow the same dopamine pathway to the pleasure centers of the brain. It's also documented that people use social media including dating apps, to stimulate dopamine. Psychology Today had an informed article on this. Links below. Dopamine offers us a hit, and often people become addicted. Some have noticed it as such a problem that they've approached me for help with it. Dating sites are great dopamine dispensers. They can be addictive. Then we throw in novelty and disposability. It's like having a bag of Doritos today, some peanut M&Ms tomorrow, and a granola bar if they feel like it. Could be the tastiness of a honey bun or some licorice vines. Either way, there's a variety, though the variety is mostly predictable. Consumers feel they can get the same things and switch them up as they desire. Some might like snacks. Some might want a meal. Some might want a main meal with side snacks. You can do it however you want. No judgment here. Which brings me to our last chewy morsels to digest. Packaging is the visual equivalent of marketing and advertising. In cave person's terms, it's the plumage. On dating apps, the focus is often on how we package ourselves, the products. We dress ourselves up, we put together a crisp tagline, and we put ourselves up on the rack. Who will notice? Who will press our button? Will we expire or be hard to keep in stock? Yet another commodification point there though the packaging is perhaps primary in the modern world. We don't have to be desirable, we just have to appear that way, in a variety of ways. Looks are important on some sites, looks and credentials on others, but you have to also be the total package. Remember our expectations? 
People are allowed to be picky, and everyone should put in an effort to make a great first impression, even if it is virtual. Your package just may not be what someone is looking for. Breathe. You have healthy self-esteem. Doesn't make it fair. Our inherent value? Yeah, still there. On apps, we can play this up more and mention our strengths where we deliver the flavor. It's all packaging on the outside in this scenario. We're just looking at pictures and profiles. Is the inside satisfying as well? Now to my last question. I introduced way back. Did dating apps deceive us? Hundreds of my clients can tell you how they were deceived by a site, the process, or other participants. Things are skewed and they're not part of the real world. They're a representation that we get to see with limited eyes. Whether it's human psychology and behavior, commodifying ourselves and others, packaging things in certain ways, giving the appearance of palatability, fun, or wholesomeness, we don't know the truth. Sometimes we think we do. Sometimes we're sure we've got a lock on it and it turns to sand in our hands. All of this can have a cumulative mental effect. In conclusion, I'm compassionate toward a lot of lonely people out there and they've been enduring it for a while. They tuned their favorite dating site looking for some tasty treats and they find some. They also find a lot of things they wish they'd never spent their money on. They ride the ups and downs, the dopamine and serotonin, breathlessly hoping they'll get what they want. Perhaps what they want changes from day to day, and this happens to be a semi-satisfying way of indulging. Maybe we have two general types of seekers on dating apps. People who are playing out our cave dweller habits, and people who are just looking for fun with everything in between. There are upsides and downsides, yet it's somehow still entertaining. It takes people away from the harsh cave person world where they meet someone in the tall grass, their eyes lock, and they grunt at each other, then begin to talk about fire and food. Later they go look at cave art or the stars and sneak off into a hot springs. Think about some of this regarding dating sites and apps. Conversely, take your chances with the vending machine you may just end up with the surprise of a meal. So there you have it, my analogy and take on the human vending machine and dating apps. I'll return at some point with other interesting dating topics, hopefully with more feedback from you and from my own research. Finally, I couldn't have done this episode without mentioning one of the most comical things I've seen lately. Not long ago, I got an advertisement for a dating service called tender meats meats as in m-e-e-t-s i think i was laughing too hard to click on the link nor would i though it might be exciting i'm just not sure i want any fresh meats right now i've got a lot going on i hope you enjoyed today's episode till next time take care